from our political editor, Darren McCaffrey. Uh, Darren, Theresa May has been touring the world, pitching the UK has an economic powerhouse that can stand on its own after Brexit. What should we be looking out for today in terms of substance? Yeah, indeed, Totes, and there's almost been this battle uh, for what Britain will look like in a post-Brexit world. And as you say, uh, one of the efforts that the British government wants to make is that it is leaving the European Union and not necessarily leaving Europe, but also that it does want to become a more globalised uh, country, that it wants to, in some ways, hop back uh, to the days of empire. It wants to have uh, closer ties uh, to the Commonwealth, uh, but also wants to one that reaches out to the emergency, emerging economies uh, around the world, such as Brazil, um, India, Indonesia, and indeed uh, Saudi Arabia. But part of that effort is also what will Britain uh, look like? And there have been uh, attempts by some on the right to suggest that uh, the British economy could look like uh, Singapore um, off uh, the west coast of Europe. That is one of uh, light regulation and low uh, taxation in order to remain uh, competitive in a post uh, Brexit uh, world. Now that of course is opposed uh, not least of all by uh, the Labour opposition. But it is interesting in a speech in New York today uh, Theresa May seems to be emphasising that point, the point that the UK will remain uh, competitive. She's expected to say that she wants to deliver a knowledge rich, highly innovative, highly skilled and high quality but with low tax and smart regulation economy. And she goes on to say that it will continue to have the lowest rate of cooperation in the G20 and that London will remain a financial powerhouse. Of course, the problem for Theresa May totes is what Brexit deal she reaches. If there is no deal, that is entirely possible. But if there is a deal, uh, in many regards, the UK may well have to remain regulatory aligned to the EU, limiting precisely what it can do on areas such as taxation and indeed, of course, on trade deals with third countries. Well, all that to look forward to on the uh, trade and economic front, but on the diplomatic front, what can we expect her to focus on? Well, also, uh, she is addressing the UN uh, General Assembly, like lots and lots of world leaders, uh, later on uh, this evening. Uh, and we're expecting, I would have thought, uh, an emphasis, of course, on what Britain will look like and that pitch uh, about a post-Brexit Britain being more globalised. But I would suspect there will be an emphasis on Russia and security, given, of course, what we've seen this year in Salisbury uh, with the chemical uh, attack. Uh, I would have thought she would call for uh, greater unity in terms of uh, sanctions and maintaining a hard line on Russia. It is notable, of course, that Vladimir Putin, the Russian president, is not there. She may well also take on this issue of Iran, because clearly there is this split between uh, Britain and its European partners alongside uh, the United uh, States. And also she is due to meet with President Donald Trump immediately after her speech at the UN. Uh, but as I say, that is coming on uh, later on today. But expect this whole message of globalised Britain to dominate Theresa May's visit to New York today.